Over the years, the Cobra family of aircraft has evolved along with the needs of the Marine Corps. Throughout the phenomenal technological advances, though, the primary mission has remained the support of ground forces. The Marines have found the Cobra an ideal platform to carry out the many duties demanded of it. What the Cobra does really reflects the nature of the Marine Corps. We are very expeditionary, very task-oriented, and no two missions are ever very much alike. And what the Cobra does, it's flexible enough to stay with the Marine component on the ground that needs it through anything. And that could involve flying ahead of that unit as it advances. It could mean catching up to that unit and taking care of threats that pop up all around it. It could mean going out on an armed reconnaissance mission by itself with no ground troops and taking out targets of opportunity well beyond where our forward Marines are. And all of these missions take place in a, a hostile, low-level environment. In the early 1990s, the Marines signed a contract with Bell to begin upgrading the 180 AH-1W Super Cobras to the AH-1Z standard. Powered by two T-700 GE-401 engines, the Zulu Cobra can reach speeds of 170 miles per hour. Cobras, Cobras and the new Hueys are powered by uh, T700 engines from General Electric. And they used to be rated at 60, 90 shaft horsepower. Um, they're a little bit improved. There's a slight difference between the Huey engines and the Cobra engines right now. But generally, they're very similar. They're, the power is a lot more improved than the old legacy aircraft and the AH-1W and the UH-1N. The, the thing about these engines, these engines are electronically controlled, as opposed to the old engines, which were in the UH-1Ns, which were Pratt & Whitney. They were more mechanical. Those required a little bit more maintenance, but everything, they're a lot easier to troubleshoot because they're electronically controlled. So it's easy to pinpoint, you know, where your problems are. It's just a matter of, in, you, all of your servicing is done in an interval, really. So as long as you keep up with your servicing intervals, it, it's basically maintenance free. It features a new quieter four blade composite rotor with an automatic folding mechanism to make the helicopter easier to store on ship. New targeting capabilities are matched by improved armor protection and cockpit design for the crew. The Zulu has the ability to survive hits by 23 millimeter projectiles and the increased capacity fuel tanks fill with inert gas as they are emptied to reduce fire hazard. Although the performance differences are notable, it is the weapons capability that keeps the Marines devoted to the Zulu. The latest Cobra can carry an extremely wide variety of weapon systems. Up to 16 Hellfire missiles can be used against ground or water targets, and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles are fired air to air. MK-77 firebombs, or up to 76 70-millimeter rockets, can also complement the 20-millimeter cannon. 20-millimeter is, uh, is a great close-in weapon, great self-defense weapon for us. Uh, it doesn't reach out quite as far as the rockets or quite as far as the uh, anti-tank guided missiles, so it's not necessarily your first choice, to, again, depending upon the environment you're in. The Cobra Zulu can also be outfitted with auxiliary fuel tanks and flares for nighttime illumination of targets. The first flight of a prototype AH-1Z was in late 2000, with initial remanufacture of operational Super Cobras beginning in 2003 and last delivery scheduled for 2013. The Marines plan to use the AH-1Zs through at least 2020.
In the recent conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, Zulus showed their strength in differing terrains and battle conditions. Operations have been performed in mountainous areas, over the desert, and in more developed urban settings. Well, actually, there's, there's two aircraft. Uh, when we're talking about the H-1 upgrade program. Uh, we have the Huey and the Cobra existing. We take those and we will make them uh, the four-bladed systems. Uh, they'll be the Whiskey and the Yankee. Uh, and, and the way they fit uh, their uh, command and control, which is the Yankee, the, the crew aircraft, uh, and then you have the Cobra, the one you mentioned, uh, actually uh, is an escort mission. It escorts uh, the Huey as it performs its mission, or it's capable of escorting anything that it can maintain speed with in and out of uh, Indi Indian country, if you will. Uh, I think what the, the new modified aircraft uh, will bring to the fight, it'll bring an Im improved ability in the digital world, uh, in the digital littoral battlefield. Uh, things that they couldn't, people they couldn't communicate with, places they couldn't go, it extends their range, it extends their lift, uh, which will make, uh, when, a, when a commander, a sink, wants them to come in and, and fight in his area of responsibility, he will see that their capability is increased now, so it's improved. So what does it help? How does it help the guy on the ground? Uh, they can take him further, bring him back faster. The march to Baghdad in the spring of 2003 showcased the efficiency of Marines on the ground and in the air working closely together. When the Cobra goes to war, it usually ends up right in the thick of the action. Such low altitude flight in such a difficult environment is taxing on any aircraft. The dynamics of helicopter flight make loose small objects on the ground a hazard when flying low. Sand presents a special challenge in desert regions, such as Iraq. The way, the way we operate is we're, you know, close air support means close air support. You know, our aircraft, I, don't, I think the pilot said today, from the, from the time they, the war started until about two weeks before we left, they hadn't flown above, like, 50 feet. So they're down there in the thick of it, getting, you know, being engaged by the enemy, engaging the enemy and destroying them. Um, and with that comes, you know, uh, battle damage. It's a, it's a mud fighter. It, it's down right above the treetops, down with the, the, the fellow Marines who are on the ground engaging the enemy in, in very close, very hostile envir environment. In such conditions, wear and tear on moving components is dramatically increased. Maintenance technicians are faced with a far more difficult job, keeping the Cobras airworthy. When aircraft's turning, it's got up to 100 mile an hour rotor wind sometimes, and it kicks that sand, rocks, whatever is out there. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's on the ground, it's going to throw it up in the air. It's going to make fight out of it. And uh, rotor blades hit that sand, and it's just like running sandpaper across it with a, like a high-speed belt sander. And so the only thing we can really do is put a piece of clear tape across the front of it, try to keep it down and change them out every other time we'd come in. The conference did great from February till about June. And in early June, the heat got so, it just got incredible is the only way to describe it. Um, hydraulic systems were having a real hard time. The engines were getting chewed up by the sand in the air. And the heat is absolutely the worst enemy uh, for these aircraft. The avionics was uh, actually, it was a ton of work. We actually we figured it out for every flight hour out there in, in Kuwait and in Iraq. Uh, I believe it was 18 or 20, between 18 and 22 maintenance hours went into that aircraft for it to fly that one hour. Today, the Cobra continues to work alongside an old companion from its very first battles. The Cobra and the Huey transport helicopter still cooperate in similar fashion to their Vietnam operations. As the gunship has advanced over the years, so has its unarmed cousin. The latest Yankee model Huey carries on the original Huey's mission, airlifting soldiers to and from the fight and keeping them supplied for battle. And it still enjoys the protection of Cobras flying cover in dangerous regions. The Cobra and and you can't really separate the two because it's it's part of our it's it's part of our mission. Uh, 
but the Cobra specifically and the Yankee, the Yankee and the Zulu, the two new upgraded aircraft will, uh, for the next 15, 20 years, I, I foresee that they will be, uh, um, you know, because of now their 85% uh, commonality, and that's what this upgrade process is about too, it makes them more common. So that reduces your footprint and it makes it uh, more deployable and supportable. Whereas before you essentially had two separate airframes coming into the fight. Now it's easier to maintain, uh, it's got more lift, it's got longer legs, uh, and, and it will better support the warfighter. And I see it being around for another 15, 20 years. Uh. The, the Zulu is supposed to carry us into the next century. Uh, you know, talking about going from uh, steam gauges to computer displays, analog versus digital, uh, better rotor system. Uh, there's, there's a lot of significant improvements in the Zulu uh, that will uh, help us fight a lot better. Uh, it's going to be different, different than what we're used to because we've been working with steam gauges for so long, but it's, uh, it's something really great that will carry us into the future. It has, has uh, tremendous potential, and I think it's every bit as good as... Uh, it will be any, every bit as good as any attack helicopter on the battlefield. Future developments are likely to permit many missions to be executed without placing pilots in the way of danger at all. The advancing technology that has kept the Cobra in service for so long may eventually lead to the end of the helicopter gunship as we know it. Marines could benefit from fire support from radically different aircraft.